So, good evening, everyone. It's been a pretty full day. Yeah. Well, we're capping off with using a new functionality with the Survey123 website, the reporting API. I'm James Tedrick. I work on the Survey123 team. Um, we also have with us Yue Zhao, who's the primary developer for this feature. Yue. So we're going to cover what we're what we're talking about when we talk about the about the reporting capability. We'll see a couple of examples of creating reports, uh, both simple and you know going from simple and working up to a more complex. And we'll talk a little bit about what we're planning on bringing it on improving in the future. At a very high level, um, I tend to liken this to mail merge for Survey One Two Three. First off, since this is a bit of a bit of a discussion within the team, who here knows about mail merge? Okay, so only about a third. So back when we mailed letters, mail merge was this amazing functionality. You would have the addresses in Microsoft Excel and in a table, and you would create a template in Word, and it could be a template for labels, it could be a form letter, what have you, and the data would go from Excel into Word and you'd get a unique label for each person, right? So we work the same way. We have a Survey123 form that gives us some information about how, the pres how uh, items are presented. We have the survey data in ArcGIS Online and we have a Microsoft Word document template. This Microsoft Word document is uploaded into ArcGIS Online and associated with the survey. We then so can select an individual record and print it out, or well, at least generate a Microsoft Word, uh, a Microsoft Word document with the survey information filled into the filled into the uh, reporting reporting places. So, so, in order to do this, we need to know a little bit about the form. We need to know some things about the fields, some setting information. One thing that we do get asked is why are we using Microsoft Word? Uh, one of the reasons is Word is one of the most flexible document systems that we have. You know, the alternative would have been maybe a drag and drop, uh, you know, create a PDF template. Uh, and so we think that Word is a little bit more accessible in that sense. So let's go in and get a quick beginning with the API. So I'm in the Survey123 website, and I'm going to open up this ma manhole inspection to the data page. The data page on survey one, in survey123.arcgis.com allows us to view the information of the survey, both as a table, as a map, and also take a look at the details. So I can see the details of this particular survey. Oops. And we actually do have a print button right here. This isn't what we're, this is not what I'm talking about. This is just a simple print of the details what we also have is this beta is this report functionality. So you can see that we've already uploaded a few templates. I'm going to go into the manage and create a new one. So we have just asking what the uh, asking for a little bit of information about the Word document, and then I can choose a Word document. If I don't already have a template, I can get started by clicking on this file or in this link, which will generate a new blank, to, uh, blank uh, document for me. And you can also see that we have the list of fields, and as we look at each field, we can see how we can actually work with this. So I'm going to open up this document, and just to make sure it's unique, I'm going to do a save as. And you can see already we have things such as fields with dollar signs and curly brackets. If you use XLS form, this should be very familiar. It's how we access values and calculations. So what we have here is, I would say, akin to a, the equivalent of the basic pop-up in ArcGIS Online, right? We've got essentially field, uh, field name, field value. Question, you know, field name, field value, right? More or less that equivalent. I'll now choose that file and 
yay sort by date and save so right now we're taking that Microsoft Word document we've uploaded it to Arctis Online and it now appears in my list uh, in my list of uh, templates so now as you see I've got this now selected and go here select that template and generate so we're now sending the feature information over to our report generation API and as you saw I just very quickly generated that file and now you can see that we've got the data or we've got the data that we had from their feature built in right mail merge you know data from the ArcGIS line into a Microsoft Word document for you to then print out So, diving a little bit deeper. Oh, that's why. Diving a little bit deeper. The basic syntax we have, as you saw, is a dollar sign and bracket and curly braces around the question name. Several question types, such as maps and images, actually can take additional parameters. For example, how, how large should the image be? You know, obviously, you know, uh, images within you know, within a Word document could take up the entire page. So very often we want a thumbnail as opposed to the full print, full size printout. Um, multiple choice questions uh, can have an appearance of bullets uh, so that we can actually see the choices that were possible within the, uh, within the template. And we also have a way to access repeating elements uh, by beginning a repeat uh, with the repeat name, putting in our, uh, putting in our fields, and then ending the repeat. This is very useful if, for example, you have a detail table. We can actually start the repeat, create a table row, end the repeat, and then you'll get a row by row on, uh, row by row of your uh, repeated information. Going into a little bit more advanced version of the report settings, uh, of a template. Let's reuse it here and go in back to the manage template. So we have this enhanced template here. And I'm just going to download this template. As you can see, this is a lot more, uh, this is a, has a lot more formatting than the original one that we were working with. We've got a header title and a somewhat tabular layout. Looking in here, you know, we've changed the formatting to be a row by row format. We also have the, a map. Uh, we're also showing our location on a map. And we're specifying a web map by its quid or by its unique ID to render. So when, the, when we request a map to, or we request a report to be made, this will generate a request out to ArcGIS Online for the map, insert it in, and it pastes it as an image into the, web, into the report. You can also see here we have a request for a photo. And again, we're specifying the size. We're basically specifying it to be 400 pixels wide. The zero means auto scale the height based on the width. Finally, you can see the repeat here where we'll list any defects. So now, if we actually, now if we generate based on this template, Now take a little bit more time because we're asking a little bit more from it, right? We're bringing the image data down from the feature service. We're accessing an ArcGIS Online map and generating it and printing it out. It still comes in relatively quickly. So now we have the map, as you see, with the additional data and the photo. Another way we could have gotten started with the template is actually from new from template. There are a gazillion templates in Microsoft Word. Admittedly, a lot of them are resumes, but some of them are forms as well. Because again, from the Survey123 website, when we go into the manage template and talk about new templates, we provide you the information for how to, whoops, for how to access it. So this is a how you would work with a multiple choice question. Here's how you would access, work with a photo. And photos you see, aside from name and width, 
We also ex uh, support grabbing information out. So we can actually put the name of the photo underneath. We can get the geolocation and the date and time of that photo as well. So we're able to, you know, so again, as you know, it, one of the best ways to get started with this is begin to, you know, get a pre-built form, you know, from a template and then start cutting and pasting your own values into it to fill in. So this is, uh, this functionality we introduced uh, at last year's UC and it's currently within beta. Uh, over the past uh, nine months, we've been doing a number of refinements to it uh, and improvements and making it more accessible. Uh, for example, you know, some of that syntax with the dollar sign curly brace bracket used to be a lot more complicated. Uh, current areas that we're looking at is one, right now this is a synchronous job. You saw the low generating spin wait and wait and wait. Um, for larger forms, we find that it takes a little bit more time to generate. So we want to make this a, a submission where we submit a request to generate the document and then you guys, and then your web, the web application will check back once in a while. We also are looking to bring in batch printing. A little bit, you know, on the longer term roadmap, we want to be able to support PDF generation so that we have a, you know, so we have a quote unquote uneditable, if you don't have Acrobat, uh, version of the file. We also are looking at making this a more robust API so it can serve more than Survey123's needs. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a slow process. We're going to be going very gradually with testing with, you know, a few customers. But it is something that we want to be able to provide as a general service. So as opposed to being mail merge for Survey123, it becomes mail merge for ArcGIS. I always keep my demo theaters really quick, so we have plenty of time for questions. Uh, thank you. Yes. So the question is, let me make sure I'm understanding. So when we create a report template, you're wanting to append file names to the name of the document or in uh, to the name of the document or within the form? So whenever you create your, your printed report, mm -hmm. can you name the document that comes out with features from within the survey itself? Ah, okay. So okay. So can we interpolate values from the survey into the into the name of the file on output. Okay. Uh, no. Currently, you can, we you can, <laughs> yes no. <laughs> yeah. Currently, we don't support that. Um, honestly, I think that's the first time I've heard that idea. It does make some sense. So um, we should write this down. And okay, cool. Okay. I my apologies. I haven't seen it yet. So. So question is, what is the timeline for portal support on this? Um, right now, I would have to say portal support would be very, it would be long term. Um, as I said, we're right, you know, as I mentioned, we've been doing a lot of engineering on the API to make it robust and stable. We wouldn't necessarily want to expose it to, you know, we, we, we wouldn't necessarily want to make it customer, ins customer installable and until we're confident that it will stay up and running and stable uh, on the portal. So, yeah, so it'll be a little bit of a longer term exercise. Uh, if you have a follow up, yep. Is it actually submitting the survey values to the, uh, to the report generation engine in the request? So the question is are we actually supporting the, uh, the feature values uh, in, to the report generation as opposed to, say, another method would be to query the feature service and get that, you know, on the server side. So the answer is we are actually submitting the feature values on the request to the API. Um, so it can, what, a couple of things we have seen is, you know, working on making sure that larger payloads are supported for very long forms. I think there's a question either Sam or up here. I, I was going to ask about portal, but you said long-term support. Uh, or long-term roadmap. 
Yeah, yeah it would be a longer term item on us. But can you already use like uh, portal feature services as uh, like, uh, to connect your survey data to, I guess? I don't know. So are you talking about just editing, working with portal feature services and Survey123 in general? Yeah. So Survey123, uh, the app field application and Survey123 Connect both fully support portal. Uh, the Survey123 website mostly supports portal. Um, the, right now it is, we don't have an on-premise installation, but you can configure the Survey123 website when you load it in your browser to look at a portal. Um, some features do not, uh, some features like print templates will not be supported because there is a server-side component, but you know, we do have support for m most of the functionality on the website. Other questions? How much control do you have over the map? Like, if you have, like, I think that you care about the um, polygon or something like that that might be tied to it, can you set the extent of the map? So the question is can we set the extent on the map? Um, we can set the extent, we can also set the scale. Uh, so that one, that version, you know, we're just using the default scale of the web map. But you can set the specific scale uh, for that. Um, the one thing I don't know, UA, would be, you know, could we auto set the scale based on the extent of a feature? I don't think I've seen that yet. So polygons, you know, can vary in sizes. So if it's a small one, you know, around that. If it's a big one, around, you know. Feature extent. Yeah. yeah. So right now, we're actually in, sorry, I didn't realize there's going to be in a reverb zone. Right now, uh, right now, it's, yeah, we can't support that right now because right now Survey123 is point only. Um, you know, when we have two-dimensional objects that actually have extent, then we would be able to look at bringing that in as one of the settings. So the question is, is it in the timeline uh, to page through multiple sets of features? Yes. Um, when I refer to batch printing, that's essentially what we're referring to, is being able to select several features and generate one, uh, you know, either one doc or, uh, or multiple docs from that. OK. If there's no other questions, I, you know, I will not keep you here, force you to stay until exactly when the show closes. So thank you for your time.